Peace, people. You know what you get when you take a real nigga and combine him with a bad bitch? I'm going to tell you what you get. You get a dysfunctional community. You get these fatherless and motherless children that's running around with resentment, low self-esteem, self-hate. All of that is a combination for a recipe of destruction, self-destruction. This is where we get this shit that's going on in every hood in the African American community where you have babies killing babies as a result of bad parenting. You know, it's sad because I say this all the time. You could be a parent that really want the best for your child. Going to work every day, sending your child off to school to get bullied, harassed. By these little ungrateful bastards that's being raised wrong, these little nigglets that don't want to do nothing but share their pain or their regrets with children that's not bothering them, with, with children that's just living a regular life. And then you'll take this little boy and you'll have this little boy get pushed and pushed. And pushed until finally he's backed into a corner and don't have no other choice but to push back. Next thing you know, the little boy that got victimized every single day because of the bad bitch and the real nigga not raising their children the right way. The mother with the fatherless child has no other choice but to turn into a savage in a village where there's nothing but savages. So now you see you have a 14-year-old or a 15-year-old that got punched, kicked, and smacked too much. And finally, that weak kid comes across that gun and that gun becomes an equalizer next thing you know that boy pushing back he's pushing little niggas wigs back next thing you know he's the man in the street and he ain't taking no shit next thing you know he's on his way to jail for 25 to life all in a fucked up cycle because of bad bitches and real niggas that, that, that just don't raise their children right. Children being raised in a household where every other dude these women is meeting is ending up in the bed with the children in the next room. Then the next door neighbors, children, your same friends, children are sitting around your children in school when they having snapping sessions are they arguing and they being disrespectful? They regurgitating out of their mouth to your child what their parents are saying about you because you a hoe. You ain't got no self-respect. You turn around and you leave your children with anybody who would babysit them just so you could run the street and be a bad bitch in the club. You only had the baby with the nigga because he was light skinned and had curly hair and you wanted your kid to have good hair too. Some pathetic shit. Pathetic shit. Meanwhile, you done got knocked up by a motherfucking real nigga that only planned on fucking you three or four times and couldn't even picture himself telling the community or the real niggas in the hood that he had a baby by you. You was a hit and quit. Nobody was supposed to really know about you. You ain't the type of bitch he could bring home to his mama. You just a bitch. See how that work? Recipe for destruction in the hood. 
When do we break the cycle of being real niggas and bad bitches? I mean, because everybody has their own definition of a real nigga. Most of the real niggas I know. In order to become a real nigga, how many of your own people you had to shoot? How many packs of crack or dope did you get off? How many keys or how many bricks did you move? Is that what qualify to make you a real nigga? Or are you a real nigga because you take care of your responsibility at home? You take care of your mother and father. You take care of your children. Is that what make you a real nigga? What makes you a bad bitch? Because you got a little fat ass. Shoulder length hair, maybe longer, maybe a weave, some perky titties, and you know how to suck dick because everybody call you pretty. Because we could always find you at the party, but never with your children, never at open school night. What makes you a bad bitch? Because you do homework with your children? Because you tuck them in bed at night? And tell them how much you love and appreciate them? Or it's because you a bad bitch? The type of bitch that'll tell your son that he ain't going to be shit? Just like his father? That you wish you never had him? That you was the worst thing that ever, that he was the worst thing that ever happened? Or she was the worst thing that ever happened to you? Because you thought you was so pretty. You thought that you was the shit. That this dude that knocked your ass up. Was going to worship you. But then when you realize he was fucking about 40 different bad bitches just like you. That you didn't really have any value to him. You was just another hit. Another bitch on a hit list. So now. All of that resentment. Goes into this child. Who's feeling unwanted. Maybe a beautiful little girl with low self-esteem who done got molested on your watch by the different niggas that started coming through your door because you were so much of a bad bitch. Every nigga wanted they turn with you, but the problem was nobody wifed you. So now you got three or four kids by different baby daddies. And in the process of that, one of them bastards or a couple of them bastards or babysitters that molested your children. So now that little princess, that little jewel, that little diamond of a little girl that you gave birth to is feeling like she got to go outside to get with that real nigga. She need that real nigga in her life. You know why good girls like bad, um, bad boys? Them good girls like them bad boys because they want to feel protected. But the good girl don't realize that that bad boy got mama issues. He got mommy issues. So that same little boy that's supposed to get with you to protect you and you looking for him to protect you. He got resentment towards woman because his mother was a bad bitch. Who slapped and kicked him every chance she got. Who raised him mentally fucked up. That told him that he was never going to be shit. Now he's the man in the hood. All that disrespect. All that self hate coming from his mother. Trickling down to him. He was forged in a fire. He was forged in a fire. Now he's the man in the hood. And he's the one that you getting with. That's going to treat you like shit. Because every time he look at you, he ain't seeing you for what you really worth. He's seeing his mother. And every chance, every chance you get or he get, he going to smack you. He going to tell you how you ain't shit. He going to treat you like he ain't like you ain't shit because he don't know how to treat a woman. And everything that he didn't have the heart to do because he knew he wasn't supposed to do to his mother, he's going to take out on you. And this is where we get the recipe for destruction in the hood. Let me say this to you parents out there. You single mothers or you mothers and fathers. 
Some of y'all are raising y'all children to be good children. But you have to understand something. When you send them out them doors to go to school, to go to the store, to go play double dutch. In a place we call the hood. There's wolves outside. That's looking to rob them for the iPhones. That's looking to rob them for the summer youth checks. That's looking to take them brand new pairs of sneakers, them Jordans that you put on their feet. There's wolves out there. I know some of y'all don't like violence, but y'all better wake up to the real world and teach your children when and how to defend themselves. When to engage in war when you have no choice but to fight. I know y'all not trying to raise no hooligans. But regardless to what you want and what you feel, war in these streets is inevitable. If you don't teach your children how to defend themselves, they will be victimized in these streets. And some of your children may not come home and tell you, mom, dad. This is what's going on in the streets because a good children, the, the good children, a good child is going to think to herself or herself. If I go home and I tell my dad, this is what happened. My dad is going to come outside. A, my dad is going to get his ass whooped because these young boys ain't playing. And dad think he tough, but these are shooters. Or B, my dad is really about that when it comes to me. He loves me and I'm not going to make my dad go to jail. So these kids swallow the shit that they endure in these streets. And don't tell their good parents what's going on because they don't want to cause their parents to be hurt in these streets. I see it all the time. I found myself in situations like that when I was a child. I couldn't tell my mother that I had the number one killer gorilla in the hood. I had beef with this dude. Because my mother used to talk about how bad my family was. Yeah, we had some fighters. Everybody was fighters. And even the ones that was killers, it was like, do you really, really want to take the chance of these dudes killing your family because you knew it could have really went down like that? So eventually, I had to be forged in that fire. A result, a result of bad bitches, real niggas, dope, coke, alcohol, overcrowdedness, and a place that they name and call the projects. What is a project? Look the word up on your own time. What is a project? What was the reason why they made the projects? Why would you combine so many poor people that don't have nothing but stress and boil them up on top of each other and leave them with no jobs? A recipe of destruction. Understand, parents, people in the urban areas in the hood, the hood is a trap. The projects is a trap. It's not meant for your children to make it out. This is why you have to draw a blueprint in order for them to make it out. My goal is not to have my children being raised in the hood. The hood is shaped it and molded for savages. A recipe for destruction for our children. Pimps, pushers, bad bitches, real niggas, shysty pastors, liquor stores on every corner. To all you little soldiers out there, man, hold your head. Teach your sons how to avoid the gangsters on the corner that done did they bids and scared to go back to jail. So now they got your child that want to fit in because they want to feel safe and feel protected holding guns in their school book bags. Holding drugs in their school book bags. And the next thing you know, that little good kid that you was raising that just wanted to be safe in the hood is doing 10 years in jail. Because one of these real niggas used your child as a holster. 
I was 15, 16 years old. And them OGs, them real niggas, took me and used me for every chance they got. They get every beef that they had. These dudes had beef with dudes that they were scared of, that they knew was dangerous. Or they knew it was just too dangerous for them to deal with. And you know what they did? They put that gun in my hand. We your big brothers. We love you. And because you feeling like you part of a family, whether it's a gang, whether it's the Zulu Nation, you find yourself outside in the middle of the concrete jungle with two guns blazing back and forth, fighting battles for these real niggas. That ain't even standing side by side with you. They leave you on the front line of defense to be that real nigga. Parents, keep your daughters and your sons away from these real niggas and these bad bitches. Because if you was a real nigga, being that y'all like to use that term, you a real nigga. You real? Real niggas go home to their wife and their children's. Real niggas understand that when it comes to these streets, it's two sides. And you don't get the pick sometimes. Or maybe you do. You gonna go be a family man? Or you going hard in these streets? But understand, my G, when you decide that you want to run these streets and you want to be gangster, you can't be a family man. So when you get locked up for being that real nigga and keeping it real with the homies, the same homies that ain't going to send you no commissary, the same homies that'll do you just like KRS-One did. Little Scott LaRock Jr. Don't even look out for him. Going, doing tours off of Boogie Down Productions all over the world. And won't even give him nothing. Those same real niggas ain't coming to see you in jail. You lucky if they even write you. Yo, Seed, I'll be stuck out there, fatherless, with nobody to protect them. And some of the other real niggas that you ran with, the first chance they get, they're going to be trying to fuck your baby mama. Open your eyes, little soldiers out there. Fight when necessary. I'm never going to tell you when, when or when not, I mean, not to fight. But understand the rules of the game. There comes a time when you fight. When you have no choice, then we deal with no regrets. Eyes stay red, guns stay butt. When it get to that point and you got to do what you have to do when you have no choice, by all means, hold yourself down. I'm never going to tell you to be a sucker. But what I am going to tell you is understand when and how to fight. Learn when to walk away. Learn when to walk away. Because sometimes there's a choice in the matter. Sometimes you got to think for your opponent and save their life. You know what you're capable of. The first time I ever shot somebody in my life, I'm going to tell you a little story. I remember the first time I ever shot somebody in my life. It was because I was built up with so much rage. And I was minding my business and I was walking. And this dude rode his bike right into my stomach. Knocked the wind out of me. Mind you, this same dude always picked on me. Knocked the wind out of me. Then got off his bike. Like, just because you walked into my bike, now I'm going to smack the shit out of you, little nigga. That day was the last day. I backed that gun out. I pulled that trigger. Shot him in his ass. And he ran his ass to the hospital and I ain't never had a problem with him again. And I kind of felt bad because I said, you didn't really have to. Once he seen it, you could have let him go. But I was like, nah, he put too much pain. The neighborhood, the community, it roughed me up too much. It gave me that anger. The, the fact that my father wasn't there, dope fiend out. The fact that my mother had mental issues from the way that she was raised. Mama loved me, but mama wasn't mentally rap right. 
And then you have to deal with the combination of real niggas and bad bitches. Murderous stick up kids. Couldn't walk from the store to my building without getting into at least about 25 fights and I was fragile. Wasn't even a fighter. Streets ain't want to hear that. It shaped it and molded me into a monster. Along with the pedophiles creeping in the bedrooms in the middle of the night. All a recipe of destruction coming from real niggas and bad bitches. Instead of moms and dads trying to save their children. The, the moral of the story. Let's take the time out to shape and mold our children right. And stop raising these real niggas and bad bitches. Because if we don't, it's going to be a domino effect. We're going to pass down this generational curse. And it's a jail cell waiting for every real nigga. And the flip side to that, there's a morgue, a cemetery waiting for every real nigga. Some of the cats that I grew up with. Died in the streets as early as 13 years old from gun violence. And the crazy part about it is, rest in peace, Tryon. Matter of fact, I think Tryon was 15 years old. He was a monster before he died. No joke, nothing to play with. And at the early age of 15 was smoked. Now, how many other stories we know like this? Being a real nigga. Always ends up bad the majority of the time. All of my niggas is in jail. All of them. With football numbers. Some of them never coming home. I got legends behind me. No need to throw their names out. And they ain't here neither. Rest in peace, B.O. Pistol Pete ain't never coming home. Xavier Williams ain't never coming home. T-Mac got 17. I could keep on going with names. Terrence got 25. Stevie got 30. Eric got 50. I could keep on going. We got to stop it with the real niggas and bad bitches. It's a recipe for destruction. Clean up our communities. Make it safe for our children to go to and from the school. Without dealing with the bully, the bullies. Without having the pimps. Trying to snatch your 15 to 16 year old girl so he can have her on back page selling pussy. Sold a recipe for destruction. Wake up, people. Grab your children. Talk to them. Teach them. Show them a better way. It wasn't, made, it wasn't meant for us to make it out of the hood. It wasn't meant for us to make it out of the hood. It's not meant for your children to make it out of the hood. What are you going to do to teach them the blueprint? To get around all this bullshit. Or would you just sit back. And allow them to get caught up in the. Web. The traps. There's sharks in that fish tank. Looking to eat the guppies. There's piranhas out there. Looking to eat them goldfish. Wake up and smell the coffee people. It's all about the youth. It ain't all about us. We lived our life now. Each one teach one. Raise your children. Stop being real niggas and bad bitches. And let's start being parents. Peace and love, people.